Hello and welcome to this, my March and February reading wrap-up. February because I only read two books in February, didn't bother doing a video for it, there was just no point. So with February and March this brings my reading wrap-up to ten books and going in order from one star slash DNF all the way up to the mighty five stars. Let's get started. So thankfully there were no DNFs this month thank god. But first up on the one star chopping block is this one, which is A Poem for Every Spring Day by Ali Azari. Um, I've read the A Poem for Every Winter Day, um, which I liked a lot more than this. The, the cover is absolutely lovely, I mean look at this. It's the best thing about the book, is the cover. So the concept for this book um, and for the other one is that Every single day for the whole of the spring months, that being March, April and May, there are either one or two poems for every single day. And I went into it expecting poems um, to be more like the cover, which would be like blossom and flowers and spring and joy and all of this other stuff. Um, I would say you can you can see like some of the little things. These are all the poems that I actually liked. Out of out of them all, I only liked these few, and that's because most of the poems in this are to do with war, uh, either to do with war or just children's nursery rhymes, not like original poetry. I was expecting something more along the lines of Wordsworth or Robert Burns or you know, more of that and less of the, you know, killing and death. I wanted spring, I wanted life. I didn't get it, I didn't like it. Most of it in here, I just, I just, there's just no point to them. And then on a, some of the days, there are just like, like for example, some of the days are just like, like this, this twaddle. And that's it, that's, that's the poem that you get. I, I didn't like it. I really didn't like it. Um, I wanted more springtime poems. It didn't deliver for me, so it got a one star because I did actually go through to try and actually find something that I liked. I didn't get that though. So next week, that is the only one star that is in this video. Um, next we go up to the two stars and that is um, A Lock of Grace and Greed by A.P. Beswick. And that is, it's only 21 pages. Um, it's an ebook only, I think. I think it is an ebook only. Um, I read it on my Kindle. It's a prologue to the Levanthria series, which is, you can see it sort of, those books waiting sort of to be read up there. Um, and I wanted to start this one first. I didn't realise how short it was until I actually opened it up. Uh, but it took me 10 to 15 minutes just to read it through. And it got two stars because it is very, very short. You're with a character at the, waiting for a battle to start. And you're waiting for the battle and then the battle happens and then she gets taken away. And that's the prologue. There's more into it than that but I don't want to give really any spoilers out about it. Um, because it is so short. If I was going to say anything about it, it would be just spoilers all the way through I might as well just vocal read it to you but yeah that got two stars for nothing more than it was just sort of a, a snapshot photo of what will be coming heading into the threes now we have an R creed called The Gargoyle by Michelle Keel I did like it I didn't love it it was all right I read it I liked reading it while I was reading it and then but I found myself putting it down and, you know, pottering about. It didn't really hold my attention and it wasn't really what I thought it was going to be. Which is probably more on me than it is the writer, but it was straight... I didn't hate it, I didn't love it, it was straight down the middle of the road. And that got a three star from me. Um, I will link... some of these have videos um, all of their own which go into more detail. And I will link those down in the description box below if you want to go check them out if you haven't already. So next up we had Voyage of the Damned. Now this was the Illumicrate book box for January so I am sort of a month... I was reading it in February but it took me... I think it took me over a week to read this because I started it and then I got bored. Um, I got bored with it 
And I thought, you know what, it, I need to know, I need to keep reading just to find out who is behind all this mystery. And that's the only reason I think I finished this, is because I wanted to know who did it. And yes, I could have skipped to the end and read who did it, but I, I, I don't like doing that. But yeah, this was straight down the middle of the road, it got a three. I didn't hate it. So yeah, and I'm selling this. This is on eBay, this copy right now, because I, I will never reread it and it'll be sat on my shelf gathering dust in the way of books that I like better. So yeah, this was a, a disappointing three for me. So following all the fantasy, I wanted a little bit of romance. And because the Bridgerton series three is coming out in end of April, May time, I thought it's about time that I actually read the books that I have. And so, I started with The Duke and I, which is part of the Illumicrate Bridgerton set. And it's so pretty. It really is so pretty. I'm, I'm like a magpie. I'm like a magpie. I like shiny, shiny books. But yeah, I read this one. It is so far removed from the TV series that I should have read this first because the TV series is so much better. Um, and there's bits in here that just it wasn't necessary i didn't like that they were included the characters weren't as compelling as what i was expecting them to be and i wasn't expecting it to be just a spotlight on simon and daphne and all of the things that are happening say like in the series or you know around them doesn't happen in this there's no queen there's no prince um, you don't get an insight into the featheringtons you don't get an insight into any other family except Simon and Daphne. You don't even really get an insight into the Bridgerton family. Just those two. And they weren't compelling. So this got a straight up, just a middle of the road, three stars. So next up we have a book that I found while I was traipsing around Waterstones. I think just after Christmas. Oh no, I did the ice trail. York has an ice trail uh, that happens every February where they hide ice sculptures around the city and you go on sort of a scavenger hunt with a map to try and check off then you find them all and afterwards um, I rewarded myself with going to Waterstones and having a browse only for browsing but I ended up coming home with a, a, a little pile and this was one of them um, I'd never heard of it it had just come out at the time and I loved the cover I buy visually you know you shouldn't judge a book by its cover I do, that's how I buy it. If it has a nice cover, I buy it. Um, and the, the blurb had me interested enough to part with my brass. I liked it. It started well at the beginning, it fell down in the middle and it had an all right end. Um, there will be a video coming up of a more in detail analysis of this. Um, I didn't hate it, I didn't love it, um, this was just a straight up, again, middle of the road, three. But yeah, I mean look, it's so, sh it look, it's so shiny, it's so pretty, it's so detailed, I love like the back and the front, like the back and the front of it is just, I like it, it's a nice book. So wanting to move away from the romance and the fantasy because I'm finding that if I switch up my genres a bit during the month, I'm tending to read a bit more. And I like westerns. This popped up on my um it popped up on my eBay that you might be interested in and I was interested. Because I didn't realize that this had a book or was a book before the film. So I bought it and then researched, which you probably should do it the other way around, but this came out after the film did. Um, and is a and is a transcription of what happens in the film. So if anybody's watched for a few dollars more, you've got the man with no name, which is played by Clint Eastwood. Um, you've got and you've got Colonel Douglas Mortimer, played by Lee Van Cleef, and the bad guy El Indio. And I can't remember who the actor is that plays him. Not off the top of my head. But I liked this film um, of the spaghetti westerns that I used to watch with my dad. This one was my favourite. I liked the watches. I liked the whole dynamic between the pocket watches. Um, I was probably too young to watch it when I first did, but I didn't really understand it. I just got the the general gist. Um, I liked it. 
it was a, a good read. If you've seen the movie, this is a good read. It is essentially the movie in written form, um, but I enjoyed reading it. Some of it, you get a little more insight into what they're thinking um, and why they do what they do. But it doesn't compare to the film. It just doesn't. Sergio Leone and Ennio Morricone directed the music. The, the, the music. It didn't have the music. And I'm sorry, but the film is nothing without the music behind it. But yeah, this one was a 3.5 for me because I didn't love it. I love the movie. I didn't love this. I didn't hate it, but I more than liked it. So it but it wasn't just a 4. So it got a 3.5 for me. And it will have its own it it will have its own video probably coming out when I remember. But yeah, all like I said, all the videos will be linked down in the description box below when they do eventually come out. So after the western, after the fantasy, after the romance, after the western, I decided to go for a classic and I wanted to reread Treasure Island. I didn't read this one as a child and um, the first introduction I had to Treasure Island was the Muppet film with with Tim Curry in it as um, Long John Silver. Loved it. Um, reading this um, it has a lot, lot more detail. I enjoyed really reading it and it is exactly what it said. And it is just a classic, classic book. And this one got four stars from me because I, I enjoy reading it. It was a swashbuckling adventure. I would recommend it if you haven't read it already. And next up, those that know me know that not only do I like to read, um, I also like to spend hours gaming. And my favourite game is the Elder Scrolls V Skyrim. I have to collect everything in there, there are mods galore, but I can't walk past something and not pick it up. And that includes all the books in the game. And that is why I read this. Now this is the first book in a trilogy. Um, this is volume one, The Histories. There is Man, Mer and Beast and The Arcane which are also on my shelf to read. Um, but this is the histories. It has details of the books that you find in the game in a proper, um, in a proper like book form. And it has illustrations in it. And it has like illustrations in it of, you know, the locations where these books are going, taking place at. And this one's the histories. It has details of say like Pelagius the Mad, the Wolf Queen of Solitude, um, Baron Zaya, there's just so much in here, it has a video all of its own, but I love the game, I can't, I think I've logged over near, just under 3,000 hours in it. I have a life, I promise. But yeah, I really, really love this, this one gets a whole four stars from me. It just didn't get the five because there was nothing I haven't already read in game. So I will spend hours in game just reading the books that are in there. But yeah, it got four stars from me. And on to the last read of the year, which was an arc read called, called The Morning of Leon Manor by A.M. Davis. And that has a video all of its own because it is my first five star read of the year. I loved it, loved it so much. It's a Victorian setting. It's got ghosts, murder, mystery, just everything entwined that I would want. And I really, really want you to check out that ARC review. Just, I think I got a bit excitable uh, with how much I loved it because I was starting to think that I wouldn't actually find a five star read this year. I see loads of videos with like other YouTubers and people on TikTok or Instagram saying that they've read like 10 five stars this year alone and I hadn't even found one of them. And thankfully I finally did. The five star is risen as it is Easter. But that was my February and March monthly wrap up. If you like any of these books, if you read any of these books, please let me know down in the comment section below. And please don't forget to like this video, click that subscribe button where you'll get notified for all future videos coming out and have a very happy Easter.